Yo, what's good, guys? It is your host, Seiji Samurai here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, yes, it's been a while, guys, and here I am with another part two. What if Asta had Agnologia's powers? You guys had requested another part to it, so here it is. Thank you all so much for your support on my new uh, Deku What If, which, yes, if you guys are wondering, I do plan to complete this one, as if you guys don't know, I had a track record of not completing my What Ifs before, but I'm fixing that now, so yes. Uh, if you guys have any future what ifs you guys want, uh, just comment it down below. I always read my comments and try to find out, like, you know, anything that the people want, you know, anything that you guys want, anything if I can do, and so on and so forth. But besides that, guys, I have already blundered long enough. I believe it's time for me to start doing this what if. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy it, and hopefully, you guys will give me the support. And besides that, guys, thank you all for being so awesome and tuning into this one. And either way, let's begin this what if. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it It's impossible, it's not probable, you're irresponsible Too many obstacles, you gotta stop it, yo You gotta take it slow, you can't be a pro Don't waste your time no more Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? So we now pick up where we last left off That being Asta had just defeated the three leaders of the Eye of the Midnight Sun Plus Licked And this ends up causing a bunch of chain of events Number one being the fact that right now the Eye of the Midnight Sun lost two of their main members, being Veto and Raya, as they had both been completely defeated, as well as, you know, murked off by Asta. This ends up leaving only Licht and Fauna, as both of them are still recovering from their injuries, as well as, you know, just the psychological damage, because, like, Asta did not hold back. And pretty much, it's going to take a while before their plans get into operation, but they're besides the point now. But right now, we're going to turn to the present where we see Asta. Also, after recovering and giving back the kids their magic, he was called into the Clover Kingdom by none other than the Wizard King. Also, thank you so much for meeting me on a very short occurrence, he would say, as they begin to walk down the corridors of the Clover Kingdom. It's no problem. However, I am expecting a fight in return, though. Also would say this with a smirk. To which Julius ends up laughing, as he's also very interested in the prospect of fighting such a very powerful foe known as Asta. While they were also walking, Marks can only do nothing more but sigh, as he's thinking that already they have another Yami, who doesn't show a proper respect for the Wizard King. So after arriving down the corridor, they end up taking Asa to a prison, to where they end up having some members of the Eye of the Midnight Sun that they captured. At this, he would, the Wizard King Julius would in turn to Asa, telling him to go ahead and try seeing if he can try to you know, lift off the magic that's preventing them from seeing through their memories. Asa would do so. Opening his mouth, he would absorb the magic simply because he was a dragon slayer, and due to this, as soon as the seal was done, this would end up allowing Marks to begin reading their memories. And this would actually end up causing the captains who were also there, but Asta didn't really pay attention to him, except for Nami, I mean for Yami, as he goes ahead and walks over to him, to be surprised by Asta's magic, considering the fact that not all of them had saw it. Wow, he was pretty, wow, that was amazing, what did he do? The youngest of the captains being Frill, I, I think that's how you pronounce his name? Yeah, Frill would say as he was honestly surprised by it, but Nozelle had a different feeling as he honestly felt a cold chill go down his spine. The feeling of Asta staring down at him with the dragonic energy of the Dragon Slayer magic, it honestly terrified Nozelle. That boy, he truly is dangerous, Nozelle would think. As after exploring through the memories, they end up finding out exactly who is the traitor of the Clover Kingdom. This being the leader of the Purple Orcas, and this ends up causing everyone in the room to turn to him. What? No, this, this, this memory is clearly false. I've served the Clover Kingdom for many generations. I, I protected this kingdom with my life. But this one also wouldn't cut in. So, is that supposed to mean that we're supposed to allow you to get away with bad deeds? I swear, what is up with these captains and being so idiotic? Asta would say, which caused all the captains to even gain a tick mark, with Yami even saying, Oi. At this, hearing this brat that came out of nowhere say this, the Purple Orca's captain would get angry. Shut up, you commoner. You all are just delusional. I'll prove it later. You guys will see. As the Purple Orca's captain tried to make a getaway, though, Asta would stop him right then and there as he's easily able to sniff out the stench of the sky. As with a single kick to his stomach, the Purple Orca's captain will be sent flying and crashing into the wall. As due to this, he will end up getting knocked out unconscious due to the blunt of the hit, and this will end up allowing Julius to send some men to capture him and lock him up. Well, very good, Asta, Julius would say as he looks at Asta. At this, Asta just shrugs it off as he turns to him. So, are we going to fight now? At this, Julius ends up letting out an awkward chuckle until he decides on something. We can have a light spar, but that's after you complete your mission. At this, Asta would look at him with a raised eyebrow as this is when we then change scenes. 
At this, we will see Julius giving the rundown of the situation, as well as the goal that they sort of determined for the Adamanite Sun as they're looking for these magic stones. So you're telling me that you want us to go to this underwater temple to retrieve said stone, said Yami as he looks at Julius. At this, Julius would nod as Asta was, you know, completely bored, just laying there with a bored look on his face, as he honestly, the only reason he even came here was to fight Julius, and he's not even getting it. So after the discussion, eventually they end up getting picked up by Finro as they decide to return back home, as this is where we're now entering the Sea Temple's saga. So we now start this off similar to the canon to where as soon as Asta and Yummy return back to the Black Bulls, they end up giving them the mission rundown. Now of course hearing this, all the Black Bulls get prepared as after this they get into a couple shenanigans until eventually arriving at, I don't know exactly how to say it, I'm just going to try my best, Raikyu for the mission. And most of the time the Black Bulls are spent just playing around with Noelle trying to show off to Asta her bikini. To which Austin's getting here a comment like, yeah it's okay. Which, of course, made her upset that Asta had no other reaction, but then again, she was still happy he checked her out. And after all that being said, eventually Yami decides to get, gather the group up for the mission report. Alright, that's enough, all of you, stop playing around. Now, hearing the demanding tone, everyone rushes over to Yami, except for Asta, who just casually walks over. Now, of course, as soon as Yami sees all of them in front, he will begin to give them a rundown of the situation. Alright. We're going to have to go ahead and travel there to the underwater temple, and there's only one person who can do it. At this, he then turns to Noelle as he points at her. You're going to be the one to go ahead and take us there. At this, Noelle is surprised as everyone then turns to her and gives her some wish of good luck as they're going to need her seawater's cradle to take her to take them down, down to the underwater temple. And Noelle, lacking faith or confidence in herself, will begin to actually hesitate, but after seeing Yami giving her a look, she decides to only nod. So... At night time as we move forward with the day, she's currently training with her magic and thinking about how she needs to do this or else her and her friends could legit like die under there. But this is when suddenly a voice would then boom in. If you continue thinking like that, you're going to make even more of a mess than you already are. At this, she would then see Asa who currently right now was legit sitting next, like literally sitting there on a rock eating a fish that was burnt up. How did you get that? At this, Asa goes ahead and looks at her as he takes a bite. I'm, I was fishing for food. At this, she looks at Asta confused, but she continues practicing her magic. But this one suddenly Asta would then appear right in front of her. I'm in the middle of training, but this one Asta would then suddenly give her a chop to the head, causing her to wince a little bit. Ow, what, what the heck was that for? To clear your mind. There, do you feel better? At this, Noelle looks at Asta confused as she feels like angry with him. But this one she stops. All the frustration about her like needing to you know be better and everything, or that, or else if she doesn't, like all her friends are gonna die. All that was completely wiped away by a simple chop from Asta. There, now you're actually gonna be able to think properly. Now try doing it again. At this, Noelle would listen to Asta's command as she tries to doing the technique, and this time pulling it off and holding it for much longer than she ever did before. However, due to this, she'll eventually end up get, you know, beginning to get some self-conscious thoughts, which causes it to end up exploding and causing her to mess up. At this, Noelle looks down for a few moments, but this is when Asta's voice would then be heard. Did you feel better now? At this, Noelle would look at Asta confused as he continues. I mean, did you feel better after the chop? You felt so much better after you didn't have to realize about what might happen, or what flaws might occur, or if you don't do this, then something might happen to us, alright? The more you think that what might happen, it will happen. Focus on the task at hand. Stop focusing about the ifs or mights. All right. Hearing Asa's crude words of inspiration, Noel would actually, you know, begin to do as he says, and this time she ends up doing it much longer. This chain will continue until eventually they end up eventually meeting up with Kaono, who was actually observing everything and actually told Asa that she, you know, he gave her some pretty good advice. To which Asa just shrugs. At this, however, she ends up, after you know talking to them and also helping all with her training, eventually it was time for them to go. However, Asta, he already knew something was off about her. But with that being said, after the next following days after the event, eventually Noel does end up landing and being able to do the cradle, actually doing it perfectly this time and mastering it, while Asta, he also did his own training. Although he did it in private without anyone looking, he was trying to train up using his Dragon Force. His ability of doing it and how long he can control it. As last time he did it, Asta didn't even feel like he was in that much control of himself as he was getting so sucked in by the power of dominance that he was just emitting. 
However, that training was doing him some good justice as he's now able to do Dragon Force and be able to hold it much longer. As we continue on with the story, you eventually end up seeing the Black Bulls eventually, you know, using Noelle's sea, sea Dragon's Cradle and actually allowing her to take them to the location. Huh, not bad, kid. Not Yami would say as he ends up giving Noelle a pat on the head, which this causes uh, Noelle to actually, you know, also feel satisfied with herself considering the fact she's now getting praise and acceptance as each one of the members also begin to praise her. Eventually, as they arrive at the temple, though, this is when Yami then turns to Asta. Asta, you're up. At this, also with Nas, he suddenly bursts through the sea, the water bubble as he ends up giving you a very powerful punch into the temple, causing it to be destroyed and giving them an opening to go enter it. So, as soon as the Black Bulls end up arriving at the sea, at the sea temple, they would eventually end up getting greeted by everyone who was surprisingly very friendly. At this, they try intimidating them and everything, but that doesn't really work out as it ends up giving off a very comedic effect. And after getting into a bunch of shenanigans, the Black Bulls end up arriving at the temple where they end up seeing the priestess. Hello and welcome to my temple, the say priestess would say as he has a smile on his face. At this, the Black Bulls would look at him until they finally end up getting into a hurdle. Guys, what should we do? asked Noel. But this is when suddenly Luck, Magma, and Ghost would then say the same thing. We beat him up and threaten him. At this, all of them would gain like a scary look on their faces while Noel looks at them with a sweat drop. I don't think that's allowed. I mean, Asta, you gotta back me up on this one, right? No one will look at Asta. Only for him to also have a scary look on his face. I've been waiting for a fight this entire time. If it gets me a fight sooner, I'll gladly take it. At this, Noelle would look at Asta too as she sighs, thinking that, you know, Battle Maniacs will be Battle Maniacs. But this one, the priest would never actually be proposing a game for the Black Bulls. Now, of course, this ends up piquing their interest as he ends up telling them that if they were to win, then he will give them whatever they wanted, to which the Black Bulls instantly end up accepting it, not really understanding all the terms. And with that being said, the man would end up, you know, using his magic, and this ends up causing the Black Bulls to be separated and start beginning to go through the entire test. And exactly why did you put me here, Yami would say as he was sitting down next to the man on a couch. At this, the man would end up laughing. <laughs> Simple. You think I don't sense that magic power of yours? I'll be crazy just to let you go ahead and wander in there. You're definitely way stronger than any of the people I have right now. At this, Yami would nod. Okay. What about the kid? At this, sitting right beside Yami with the very ticked off look on his face was none other than Asta. As the priestess would also begin to sweat a little bit. Are you kidding me? Do you not feel that magic power of his? I swear I felt it right as soon as you guys enter. He's even more terrifying. I'm not going to let him near him. At this, Yami goes ahead and looks at this guy, and he has to admit, Asta would have completely dominate. Well, I can't deny it, Yami would say, as he also sits down getting comfortable while watching the fights. The only one who was not getting comfortable was Asta, as he, having waited this long for a fight only to not get one, was snapping. Gosh dang it! Asta would scream at the top of his lungs. As to everyone outside, they can hear the rage cry of a dragon as they all actually get a shiver down their spine. So the straw, I mean, I, was about to say, I was about to say straw hats. The Black Bulls end up fighting into the game and I'm just going to say this, the Black Bulls end up winning it all. And the reason for this one is because of the fact, well, the Black Bulls, well, they're strong. I mean, sure, some of them, when the, some of the you know people that are there do end up giving them a powerful fight, but the Black Bulls are easily able to overpower them. So I'm going to say they just win this one. And after winning it, they end up asking, you know, exactly where is, like, the, you know, this, the magic stone. To which, this is when the priest actually ended up showing that he had no idea of it. Now, before, right before the Black Bulls can start threatening the man, this is when suddenly Nero then appear. As she ends up giving, giving the stone directly to Asta. Huh. I forgot about you, Asta would say as he looks at her. This Nero says nothing more. She actually sits down on Asta's head while he just looks at the stone. Eh. So, can we take it? Also, it says he looks at the priest with a tired look. At this, the priest would nod as finally after that, the Black Bulls were done with the Sea Temple. As this arc really went by in a flash, since the members of the Adam and I son, they're too injured to really go out there and start trying to cause havoc. And so with that, and finally ending off this arc, we now do a time skip. As we end up seeing the Black Bulls, that being Yami, Charmy, and Finral, as well as Asta, as they were right in front of the Wizard King, explaining the whole situation. This, the Wizard King ends up laughing. I see you guys all had quite an adventure. Well, 
I mean, as he slowly turns to Asta, as he, heck, every single one of the Black Bulls members were sweating, except for Yami Howard. He also was a little bit tensed. As Asta was currently having a very, very tired look on his face, as he was upset. I mean, literally, every one of the Black Bulls were getting a chance to push themselves during that, while he had to sit in this tiny little room with an old man and an even older man. As the Wizard King sees this, he goes ahead and coughs. <clears throat> Oh, um, Asta, you know, about that spar of ours, uh, I believe we can do it. How this is when Asta wouldn't cut him off and says, we could do it later. Some weaklings just stumble in. At this, Asta wouldn't suddenly vanish right before everyone's eyes, leaving nothing more than an imprint of his foot in the ground. As this one suddenly all the windows in the room would then shatter. Yikes, just how strong is that kid? Thought Yami, as literally Asta did not even do any magic ability. No, he just simply used brute force. And pretty much, it looked like he teleported, but he really didn't. He just went ahead and ran out of the room so fast, it was literally like, like he teleported. As we turn our attention to outside the kingdom, we will see the Diamond Kingdom th currently throwing attacks at the Clover Kingdom, trying to show their dominance. Let's show the Clover Kingdom the dominance of the Diamond Kingdom! One of the men would shout as they were all laughing arrogantly, not knowing, not knowing that they were currently approaching their graves. As standing on top of a building, right now, staring down at all of them, you'll see Asta, as he had a very ticked off look on his face. At this, this is when one of the men would then spot him. Hey sir, look at that! What? One of the, the other guy would say, as the leader would then look at Asta. <laughs> oh boy, a small little weak mage? Please, let's end him off here. At this, this is when suddenly all and each one of them would then throw an attack at Asta. As each one of these dangerous attacks were approaching, right behind Asta, many people were running away in terror as they see this ginormous attack approaching. At this, Asta seeing the attack would then scoff, please. As this is when Asta opens his mouth, he will begin to absorb all the magic energy as everyone can do nothing more but watch his shock as the man eats it up. What? One of the people would say as finally, after gobbling up all the magic, Asta would turn to them. You bastards are nothing more than an annoyance, and even worse, you guys took me away and made me postpone a fight. So due to this, I won't let you leave this kingdom alive. At this, each one of them, each one of the men that are currently riding on wyverns will begin to actually quake in fear, as this one also would begin to charge up as an enormous amount of magic energy began to approach him. Dragon Slayer Arts. Dragons Roar! At this, the ginormous roar would then be heard as literally a blue beam would shoot out of Asta's mouth as the men who are riding the wires can do nothing but watch in shock as the attack completely obliterates nearly all their forces, leaving only 25% of it left. At this, the members of the Clover Kingdom can do nothing more but watch as literally the roar of a dragon will be heard throughout the entire thing. Some people covering, many people are covering their ears while others look at the display in shock. That kid... <laughs> He really does not know how to hold back, Yami would say as he looks at Asta. As as soon as the attack was ended, the forces, with, the forces that were on their wyvern were completely decimated. There was nothing left of them. At this, Asta would then suddenly raise his fist up into the air as he then shouts, For the Clover Kingdom! At this, suddenly each one of the magic knights that are currently on duty as well as just regular knights would then all shout for the Clover Kingdom as well as they all go ahead and do a battle cry as they rush outside. At this, this is when, of course, Asta would also begin to fight off the rest of the remaining mages, as, heck, even Yuno went outside as well to go ahead and join into this one. At this, seeing that they were all going in, Yami then sighs, please, I can't go ahead and let myself be shown up by someone who's supposed to be working under me. At this, suddenly jumping out the window, Yami would go ahead and send multiple dark slashes to some of the remaining mages that were there, as they all, you know, gasped in shock. Just, he wiped out nearly all our forces! Just, who is that guy? Howard, this is when the man would then be cut off by a katana as he ends up getting slammed into the ground. Let's talk and more fighting. Now who's next? As this one suddenly a ginormous tree would then grow on, this is when we will see William Vongent as he also begins to, you know, knock away the remaining mages while also healing some of the people that got injured by the fallen rubble or just because of the distraction that the rest of the mages caused. And of course, this is where Yami then decides to actually have a talk with his old rival. Back with Asta, he was currently destroying and wiping out multiple of the mages, as many of them were at this point just gave up on fighting the man. Run! He's a monster! One of them would shout as he was about to run away from Asta, only for him to be grabbed by the ankle. I'm not letting you guys leave alive! 
And this also would slam the man onto the ground, a la Hulk style, as until he then sent him flying, crashing into another one that was riding on a wyvern. At this, this one suddenly also would also send someone approaching from behind him. However, right before he could though, this one suddenly a, a gale of wind would then suddenly shoot the man and sending him into the wall. He almost had you there, you know what says. He ends up making his appearance known. At this also look at Yuna as he scoffs. Please, I had him. How dare you interrupt my fight? At this, Yuna goes ahead and laughs. As this is when suddenly you would then see Belle along with him. So, this is the one Yuna is talking about. She wouldn't stop as she begins to shake. Who is this guy? At this, she feels it. All this magic. It was beyond even her and she's a spirit. At this, she felt it as it continues just growing and growing in power. He felt limitless. Is he, what is he? Does he have a spirit? No. No spirit can generate this much. What is he? At this, she was honestly sweating in the presence of him, while also just casually talked to you know about trivial things. As while he ended up doing this, this one suddenly also would end up seeing Finro end up approaching him. Also, there you are. Man, you run up, man, you ran really fast. Finro would say as he ends up panting. You really need to get stronger. You're so weak. At this, Finro feels some shots in his back at that comment, but he can't deny it. He really is. At this one suddenly, he'll then turn to Yuno. He'll be confused. Uh, Asta, who is he? At this, Asta would look at him. Uh, nothing much. He's just a kid brother of mine who thinks he's a rival. At this, hearing the comment, Yuno would then shout. He says, I am your rival. I'm going to become the Wizard King. Hearing his goal, Finro will be surprised at this. However, after seeing the display of magic power, as well as the fact that also the fact that like he's just radiating a bunch of magic energy, he would be just like he would fully believe in Yuno, but this one suddenly also his next word would surprise him. Exactly. You're the goal of the Wizard King. My goal is to be the strongest that there is. At this hearing Asa's comment, Finro would be surprised at this, as both Asa and Yuno would give each other a smirk. Well then, you're gonna have a hard time beating me because I'm gonna become the strongest wizard king that there ever was, or that will ever will be. At this, Asta hearing this would give a smirk as both Asta and Yuno began to get send each other a, a challenging smirk. But this one suddenly also then suddenly pick up the scent of someone. Are you gonna continue looking and stalking us like a pervert, or are you gonna do your damn job? At this, hearing this, Asta, Yuno and Finro were confused until they suddenly look up to see the presence of Langarus as he was staring down at Asta with a confused, and honestly, a blank look. At this, also would stare at the man as he scoffs. As this one, one of the enemy mages would then appear, as he was currently trapping a bunch of civilians in this white blob or whatever. At this, he tries to speak up and you know give his typical evil villain monologue, but this one also would turn to him. Shut up! I don't care. At this, shooting off an attack, also would suddenly obliterate the man's blob, freeing the people. As he would also catch the man by the head and slamming him into the ground. Hey, Fenro, can you go ahead and look after these people? I'm just going to go ahead and send this guy to one of the guards so that way they can interrogate him later. At this, Fenro nods his head as Asta would suddenly jump up into the air as Yuno, seeing his rival going off, would then turn to Belle, telling her that it was time for them to go as he didn't want to be left behind. So seeing that Fenro was not alone with his brother, he would then begin to actually help out the people until Langris's voice would then set in. You must feel pretty lucky, huh? I mean, after all, he's actually doing the job that you're supposed to do. Ah, uh, I bet it feels great, doesn't it? While he does all the work, you go ahead and lays off. Stay being pathetic and weak, knowing that you'll never be nothing more than my failure of a brother. At this, hearing these words, Finro would actually, you know, wince, like, wince a little bit, as he actually felt physically struck by those words. He knows that he was weak. He knows that he's inferior. However... He's seen Asta done amazing things. A kid with no background at all. Nothing. He was a commoner. He, was, he didn't even have his parents. He was an orphan. He rose up from the slums and now look where he is. He is one of the strongest people that Finro has ever seen. And he has doubt that literally anyone, that literally anyone outside of the Clover Kingdom has a chance of beating him. As Finro continues helping people, he then says, You're right. I know that I can't beat you. However, at this, he wouldn't turn to Longris and give him a determined look, which shook the man as he felt Finro, he never seen Finro like this. The Black Bulls will beat the Golden Dawn. That is my promise. At this, hearing these words, Longris then gets angry as he gives Finro a look of sneer and disgust as he then suddenly, you know, goes away. Damn it. That new boy of the Black Bulls. 
Finro will never have any confidence in himself, and now he is? It's all because of him. It makes no sense. As seeing that he was now walking off, this one he would then see his captain as he had just gone, as William Vongis had just finished a discussion with his rival being Yami. As just as he was walking, he would then run up on his captain. Uh, sir, do you know who that boy is? Longer so says, he then suddenly points into the sky where he sees Asta. However, this time, Asta was, you know, slamming two power of the ends directly into the flying wyverns, causing him to crash down into the ground. As he lets out a mighty roar while people cheer for him. At this, William then looks at him. I don't know much about the boy, but I do know this. His power goes far beyond anything we've seen so far. And I have to admit, Yami really did make the right choice. While we were all ignorant of this man's abilities and powers, he was able to overlook it and saw what he truly was. As, Yon, as William Von Jones will walk away as he sees Asta once again finishing off the rest of the enemies and putting an end to it, Inger, uh, Longress can do nothing more but look at him in surprise, shock, as he was just left there, feeling completely confused by the words of his captain. At this, we now turn back to the Black Bulls, as after everything was done, they eventually decided it was time for them to return back home, and after Asta finally got a little bit more of his fill, although the Wizard King ends up telling Asta that although he can't fight him right now, eventually they will. And that is a promise to you guys as a viewer, I will go ahead and find a point in time where Asta might find the Wizard King, but I'm going to have to write up on that one, because I, I, it's still going through a process, okay? But back with Asta, though, as soon as he ends up returning back home, he got noticed that Finro was extremely quiet. As Asta, of course, was, of course, you know, confused by this one, he decides just to ignore it, as he decides that he was going to go train. Now, while this was happening, though, Finro, who currently right now is quiet, and seeing Asta walk off to do some training, he'll then suddenly walk into the base of the Black Bulls. Guys, we need to talk, Finro would say, as he looks at each one of them. At this, the Black Bulls, who were currently just, you know, dazing off, would then suddenly look at him. Yeah, what's up? Uh, Vanessa was as she looks at him confused. At this, Finro looks down for a few seconds until he looks at them. Guys, I believe we need to get stronger. At this, everyone would look at Finro confused as this is when he would then get into ex explanation. Throughout the entire time that Austin's been in the Black Bulls, he accomplished more than the entire group has done in a single year. Like legit, Asta has done more feats and more things than any of the Black Bulls except for Yami. But that's because the man has gone through everything. Like, this man has already experienced a lot of stuff. While Asta, he legit had not even been a Magic Knight for that long and had already accomplished way more than any of them. And after the most recent incident that happened, which was during the invasion of the Clover Kingdom, Asta had completely decimated, like, nearly the entire army by itself. Asta had shown strength and power, and he was leaving them all behind. And this made Finro realize that if the Black Bulls don't do anything soon, they're going to be left behind in the dust. And one day, when they find a threat that they're not going to be able to go up against, that there's no Asta or Yami coming to save them, they will end up dead. And with that fear in mind, Finro ends up looking at them, as he ends up telling them with a determined voice that they need to get stronger. And the Black Bulls, who are silently listening to all this, can't help but agree with him. After all, they have seen Asta accomplish multiple amazing things while they just stayed the same. And they, at first, some people would think like, oh, Asta's just talented, but it's not the case. Asta trains himself 24-7. This, this man does not enter the Black Bull's base until it's already the dead of night. And, even early, and he wakes up early in the morning to continue training. And yes, although Asta's magic is impressive, he was the reason that it turned out this impressive. It's due to Asta, his training, and his will to go ahead and become stronger. It's, all, it's the only reason why Asta is so strong to this day. And after thinking this over, the Black Bulls have no choice but to actually agree with Fenro on this one. However, some of them still wasn't really full on to the idea. However, Magma, Luck, and Noel, they were on board with Fenro's plan. Well then, what should we do then? Um, Noel would say. But this is when Magma would not suddenly step up. Simple. We're going to ask the only man who can help us. At this, Magma begins to walk over, swallowing any pride that he had or anything at all. As seeing where this was going, Luck would also end up agreeing, as well as Finro who ends up following them. Noel seeing where they were going also ends up agreeing with them on this one. As walking outside, we will see Asta as he was currently right now, 
doing push-ups, as he was having like a bunch of boulders on his back, as he was doing his regular warm-up. As he was doing it, Austin wouldn't stop as he ends up seeing the Black Bulls. Sup? At this, Austin ends up seeing them, how each one of them had a serious expression on their face. At this, Fenrir wouldn't suddenly step up, so he would then actually look at Asta before bowing his head. Asta, can you please help us get stronger? At this, silence began to set in the entire area, as the rest of the Black Bulls can do nothing more but watch with, you know, anticipated breath, until Asta just continues doing his, his exercise. That's the reason why you guys came out here and stopped my exercise? Doi, I was going to help you anyway. At this, hearing this, the Black Bulls end up looking on with surprise, as they all have a smile on his face, as after Asta was done, you know, doing the boulders, he decides to push off his warm-up for a little bit more, as he decides to help them. Alright, then let's get started. As Asta says this, the rest of the Black Bulls end up getting a determined look, as this is when Gordon would also walk outside, as he also wanted to get stronger. And of course, seeing this, the rest of them were surprised, as they barely even heard of the man, but nonetheless, they were still down for it. And due to this, this is where we're also going to give them a sort of training saga. Considering the fact that since Asta didn't have his arms broken on like in canon, they didn't have to go ahead and search for the cure this early. But don't worry, we will get to the Witch's Forest arc. But until then, I'm going to give them a small miniature training, like a training montage. As slowly but surely, like not all the Black Bulls train, but slowly but surely they, they will eventually, they all will eventually get into it. But until then, hopefully you guys will enjoy this part to this what if. Uh, it's not going to lie to you, your boy's kind of exhausted from going through the entire thing. Plus, I had a very large day today, so, yeah. Your boy is exhausted. Yeah, jeez. So, either way, guys, is your host. Thank you all so much for tuning into this one. Hopefully, you guys have a lovely day. And hopefully, you guys just enjoy doing whatever you guys feel like doing right now. But besides that, guys, is your host, Seiji Samurai. And I'm off. Peace and have a lovely day.